This is my dream truck, but this is not my dream turbo. This is not necessarily my dream turbo, but it'll at least get this truck into the 21st century. Right now, it's an absolute tractor, and I love it, but it is slow as Okay, we're gonna start by switching out the turbo, which means unbolting everything from it, for the intake, the exhaust, uh, and as well as the oil feed and return lines. Intake side V-band. This is why it was so loud in the cab. The exhaust just opened up right <laughs> underneath it. Jeez. And that is a first gen turbo. You don't care. Here we have the two turbos, the one that came out of the truck and the one that we're going to put in the truck, the HX35W from the second gens. As you see, the flanges for the exhaust are about parallel with each other. And we're gonna show you what our conundrum is right now. As you see, the compressor side, these do not line up. Additionally, the oil send and return, which you see between these two, these do not line up from turbo to turbo either. So what we did is we knocked off this ring for the compressor side, as well as broke these bolts loose that bolt everything together so that now we can adjust where everything sits. So we're gonna get these about lined up just the way it was so we can put everything back in the truck, direct replacement. We don't need any new lines or anything weird. Here is the exhaust turbine outlet adapter plate thing. I don't know what it's called, but that's what I'm calling it. And uh, it's for a smaller pipe. This one's for a bigger pipe because I wanna run a four inch exhaust all the way back. Uh, do I have a good reason to? I was gonna say like if I ever decide to change the turbo or you know, it's just four inch, it's universal, but honestly, it's just cool. And for reference, this is the part that bolts to the turbo and this is the actual four inch V-band. We're gonna weld, weld that onto there. Over here at the chicken farm, we're building turbos. <laughs> we got a new flange on there. Turbo time. <laughs> Buying elbows was pretty expensive, so we ended up buying a donut of death. We're gonna cut it on the bandsaw. It's the shape of the earth. You okay? Yeah. That's why I wore gloves. <laughs> Next trick, I'm gonna saw this lady in half. We've been cutting and fitting and welding. It's all tacked into place, but there's the beginning of the downpipe. Here's the downpipe. Got a weld on this last V-band. There it is. All right, we're back another day. We have the downpipe all welded up, but it's gonna get pretty hot and it's pretty close to the firewall, so we're gonna wrap it in some uh, pipe wrap, header wrap. 
I should help it. As a final touch, we got some hose clamps on there. No big deal. So as you see, it sounds great, runs great, but we need to get the exhaust to the back of the truck. That's what this angled piece is. I bought this piece that goes right over the rear end, added on a little bit to it so that we could get it to line up with what exists. But yeah, last step right here. Exhaust is on, all mounted, have all the hangers on it. Let's see what it sounds like. Hey, quit stealing dirt. Oh, this is so freaking cool. Hey, Dad, you get in it. I want to hear it. So that wraps up the HX35W swap as well as the 4-inch exhaust install on this first-gen Cummins, but we are not done upgrading this thing. So you saw the original 0-60. to 60. Now we're going to upgrade it with some fuel stuff. We're gonna do a fuel pin, as well as a governor spring, as well as a pyrometer and boost gauge just so we can monitor everything. That's in the next video. We're gonna really get some power out of those upgrades. And with everything together, we're gonna to then see what this truck can do zero to 60. But please stay tuned because the upgrades are not even close to being done. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you very soon on the next one. Peace.